So in this maths question, um, we have two squares of unit length, and the red square can rotate, as you can see. And the and it's actually two questions. The first question is how to maximise the intercept where the blue line intercepts the y-axis and the other is the maximum slope for the line and interestingly so we solve this using Lagrange multipliers so the original question comes from uh, Michael Penn's video how big can y be um, where we're looking where he's just looking at the y intercept um, but we start with a simpler question which is maximizing the slope at first I thought these two were the same but they're not we look at two similar questions involving Lagrange multipliers the methods used follow the describing the excellent tutorial um, so I followed a tutorial on YouTube and I put a link in the description the original problem comes from Michael Penn's video and uh, we start with a very similar problem uh, which is to maximize the slope. So we call uh, the length from uh, the origin O to the corner A and from there to there B. And because it's a unit square um, we have the constraint that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. And also, uh, by similar triangles, we can see that uh, that's the case here. We've got a, b, b, a, b, a, b, a, and so on. So the coordinate of b is going to be b little b across and a plus b vertically. And the coordinate of capital A, this corner here, is going to be a plus b plus 1 across and 1 vertically. So question 1 maximize the slope of the line AB by rotating the corners. If we let the coordinate O be 0, 0 then the coordinate of B is B comma A plus B and the coordinate of A is A plus B plus 1 comma 1. And find the slope of the vertical uh, coordinates of A and B we see that from A to B we move A plus B minus 1 and look at the horizontal coordinates we see that from B to A we move A plus 1 across. So if we're looking to maximize the slope we can ignore the fact that the gradient is negative and just take the positive value. So the gradient is A plus B minus 1 over A plus 1. Now, if we do a little trick and add 0 in the form of 1 minus 1, we get a plus 1 minus 1 plus b minus 1. And that's nice because we get a plus 1 in the denominator and in the numerator. So we can bring that out and we end up with just 1 plus b minus 2 over a plus 1. And because 1's a constant, if we're looking to maximize it, we don't need to worry about that. So if we're going to we're going to use Lagrange multipliers and basically what we want to do is we want to maximize this function which uh, we're going to call it in terms of x and y so it's y minus 2 over x plus 1 and we've also got this constraint from Pythagoras theorem that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 so we, we let g of x comma y be the constraint and then what we do is we take the gradient of both functions and we notice that uh, they should be l a, l a multiple, so they should be proportional to each other because they're in the same direction, uh, but there will be a multiple and possibly a negative. So we have this lambda. So we find the gradient of g, which is the gradient of x squared plus y squared. So the first coordinate is differentiating with respect to x. So here y is a constant, and we can just get 2x from the x squared. And similarly, differentiating with, with respect to y we get the second coordinate 2y differential of y squared and then we also do the same for f we find the gradient of f and the gradient of f uh, is the gradient of y minus 2 over x plus 1 
Now, when we differentiate with respect to x, this is essentially like differentiating 1 over x plus 1. And then we'd get, uh, so that would be uh, uh, x plus 1 to the minus 1. So when we differentiate it, we get um, uh, x plus 1 to the minus 2. And the y minus 2 is a constant. So we end up with y minus 2 over x plus 1 squared. And from the chain rule, we could just see we, we just get a 1, so we don't need to worry about that. And then uh, differentiating with respect to y, then we have 1 over x plus 1 times y minus 2 times, but that 2 times is all going to be a constant, so that's going to disappear. And we'll just end up with, uh, so we've got a constant times y, so, and the constant is 1 over x plus 1, so that's uh, the differential with respect to y. And then we set the two things equal, so the first coordinate is equal to lambda times the first coordinate of the other one, and uh, the second coordinate to give two equations. So the first equation is y minus 2 over x plus 1 squared is equal to 2 lambda x. And the second equation is 1 over x plus 1 is equal to 2 lambda y. And from the constraint equation, we also, of course, have x squared plus y squared equal to 1. So we've got three equations and three unknowns. Uh, and the first thing we do is we rearrange this one to get uh, lambda is 2 minus y over 2x times x plus 1 squared and we substitute that into the second equation we substitute that in here and we get uh, 1 plus x plus 1 is equal to 2y times 2 minus y all over 2x times x plus 1 squared now the 2's are going to cancel and the square here is going to cancel with the x plus 1 so then we'll just be left with 1 is equal to y times 2 minus y over x times x plus 1. I'm multiplying both sides by the, the uh, denominator x times x plus 1 gives us x times x plus 1 is equal to, to y times 2 minus y. Uh, which if we multiply out the brackets is x squared plus x is equal to 2y minus y squared. So now we've actually just got two equations. We've got the constraint equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And we've got x squared plus x squared is equal to 2y minus y squared. So if we rearrange the constraint equation to get uh, the y squared, uh, the x squared in terms of y squared, we get x squared is equal to 1 minus y squared. And then if we substitute that in to the equation for x squared, we get 1 minus y squared plus x is equal to 2y minus y squared. And here the y squares are going to cancel, and we just end up with 1 plus x is equal to 2y. This gives an expression for x in terms of y. x is 2y minus 1, which we can substitute into the constraint equation. Uh, we get 2y minus 1 squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And when we expand this out, we get a quadratic where the 1 cancels with a plus 1 and a plus 1. And we end up with 5y squared minus 4y is equal to 0. So obviously y equals 0 is a solution. Um, and uh, if we factor that y out of the equation, we end up with 5y minus 4 is equal to 0, which implies that y is equal to 4 over 5. Substituting this back into uh, x, we get... Uh, uh, x is going to be 2 times 4 over 5 minus 1, and that reduces to 3 over 5. So the function f is maximized on the region x squared plus 1, when x is 3 over 5 and y is 4 over 5. And uh, we can also go back to the original expression for the gradient and see what that is. So we substitute it in. And we get, um, uh, oh, I've, I've, I've taken the negative here, so because the gradient is actually negative, and that works out as minus 1 over 4. And because the gradient is minus 1 over 4, if we look at the diagram, and we can see that b is going to be 4 over 5, 
and the gradient is 1 over 4. So that means that from C to the top of this big square is going to be 1 fifth and we've already got uh, 7 fifths here. We've got 3 fifths, uh, 3 fifths for A and 4 fifths for B. So, so overall the intercept is going to be um, so I'm going to scroll down and I think this video is going to be long enough this way so I'm just going to leave it like this so here's the solution for the maximum slope we end up with y is equal to 1.6 and a and b are 3 over 5 and 4 over 5 so if you think about it that means that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle just all the sides divided by 5 and the slope is minus quarter and it intercepts at 8 over 5. And um, I'll just briefly mention, although I'm going to do it in a separate video, um, that the y-intercept, if we're maximizing the y-intercept, we can actually increase the difference is 5 thousandths. We can go, the maximum slope is not actually the maximum y-intercept we can actually get a higher y-intercept which is 1.6005 and interestingly uh, the solution for that will be end up being in terms of phi the golden ratio where a is phi minus 1 so a plus 1 is phi basically and b is the square root of a and y will be this expression 1 plus 2 times phi minus 1 to the 3 over 2 all over five. Um, I'm not sure if I will do another video to go through that. I might do, um, but basically it's the same method, uh, but where precise. Uh, yeah, I, I probably will do another video on that. Okay, that's it for now. See you.